So, well, ladies and gentlemen, now I'd like to invite most uh, power pack leaders for this session. First up, uh, Ms. Anmol Gill, Head Customer Marketing India and Neighboring Countries, Bacardi India Private Limited, Dr. Ipsita Chatterjee, Head Innovation, Development and Brand Strategy, Lotus Herbals Private Limited, Mr. Prasanna Raman, Advise Advertiser Solutions Lead, Snapchat India, Mr. Rajiv Jain, VP Marketing DS Group, and the session will be chaired by Mr. Akshay Mathur, CRO Tyro. Well, ladies and gentlemen, with this, I'd now like to welcome our entire panel who's joined us and given us their valuable time. And I'd now like to pass it on to our session chair, Mr. Mathur, for taking it forward with his able panel. Over to you. Thank you. A very good evening to all who've joined us for this panel discussion on building brands of tomorrow to mobile from branding to performance. Uh, we have a, a, you know, a very rich panel uh, today and uh, we have Anmol, Ipsita, Prasanna and Rajiv in the panel. Uh, and I'll be, I'm very excited to kind of talk about how mobile marketing has been, uh, you know, shaping up in the digital ecosystem and how they've been using you know their brands uh, uh, and leveraging that as a medium Hi. you know we have a great mix uh, of brands and publishers in the panel today and uh, uh, you know just excited to kind of talk through with them uh, i'll start with you rajiv uh, you know mobile marketing is like the dominating in uh, you know the digital pie right now so how significant has it become for uh, your brand at uh, DS Group? Ajib, I think you're on yeah. mute. Sorry, am I audible now? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and good evening, everyone. Uh, the number of mobile and digital, uh, when we talk about mobile, I think uh, digital is basically becoming synonymous with mobile only now because I think that more than 90% of the access of digital is for mobile only. Uh, even during pre COVID, also, the numbers were increasing. And during COVID time, the numbers have gone up very, very high. Uh, this has been helping the marketer at DS uh, uh, brand team and all in various ways. Number one, various of our brands, they are high impulse category brands, which need sustained visibility throughout the year and very needs various consumer engagement activities. Uh, in TV and other conventional medium, this become difficult a bit to be present in the media throughout the year. You need a minimum factor level of budget. Number two, it's not possible to target your communication in particular consumer segments or in particular geographical territories. Uh, mobile is giving us a lot many other options of if I want to focus uh, my communication in particular states, particular consumer segments, on particular occasion, in some particular context. So mobile is giving me various these kind of options. Number two, as, as I said that various of our brands, they are high impulse category brand, which needs a lot of consumer engagement activities. In TV, it's not possible at times in TV or maybe other conventional medium. But in digital, we can do a lot many consumer engagement activities, which may include gaming, which may include influencer activity, uh, which may need uh, some con consumer contest and all that. Plus, apart from brand building, what I am seeing the benefit of uh, mobile marketing, it captures the complete consumer journey. The how the consumer journey is captured that it's the journey from awareness to advocacy. Uh, it's not only not only giving the platform for building the building the awareness. Also, I can map the journey that whether my brand has come into consideration that the consumers or not, whether he has done some searches around my brand or not, whether he has actually purchased, and after purchase, what has been his feedback? That is the most important thing, in fact. So this gives the complete journey of the uh, consumer, uh, which is perhaps not possible in any other conventional medium. Uh, <clears throat> apart from that, it's playing very important role in the personal. Nowadays, the consumer is very demanding. Uh, 
they uh, every consumer has a different kind of demands and uh, needs and wants and all that mobile can map the consumer's motivation barriers the triggers uh, interest area in a very very focused manner and i can do the targeting of consumer i can do the need satisfaction of the consumer the consumer journey in much more effective way absolutely sorry absolutely you, you are absolutely right uh, when you say that you know there is a focus targeting and you're able to kind of capture uh, the right audience that you want to uh, you know target and segment those users and then show creative solutions or relevant creatives rather to the right audience set and mobile actually helps you uh, do that much uh, much much uh, easier than you would be able to do in a traditional medium um uh, and you know in traditional medium you uh, tend to just um, bucket audience bases uh, you know uh, the publishers itself right so if it is mtv then you say okay anyone who watches mtv is of a certain age group and uh, you know that's how you decipher your audience but uh, in mobile and of course it starts with digital there is more niche target uh, targeting possible uh, dr ishita how how are you seeing uh, you know uh, you know mobile uh, marketing or in lotus herbal and how you using uh, that to leverage uh, for your brand uh, you guys are very offline driven and i do understand that uh, you have an uh, you know uh, e-commerce site and you're doing things online now uh, but how has mobile marketing worked for you previously and now post covid right definitely i think uh, there has been a major shift for uh, lotus herbal's private limited as a beauty conglomerate uh, for shifting the focus towards a mobile first brand and uh, i think the kind of uh, timelines we've had to deliver it during the covid period was phenomenal the team worked very very hard and we did uh, manage to move towards a mobile first strategy and of course uh, you know there were a lot of changes which happened internally strategy wise in the marketing plan also and of course now it has become really big for us so i think we are up for the challenge as you know 95% consumers who are online interacting with us are through mobile devices so i think uh, lotus of course our physical presence our retail presence was our top priority before the covid times but with changing times i think we have adopted better and of course mobile marketing is a very big part of our digital strategy now as i said and also i think uh, you know um, given the kind of uh, lockdown period we had the kind of influencer marketing uh, campaigns we took over so all of this contributed to this entire digital uh, a uh, first movement for lotus herbal private limited and that's how now of course we are moving towards a mobile first strategy for sure absolutely right so covid has actually accelerated a lot of things it did <laughs> it, did. it, did. it, did. it uh, did and we were shocked by the timelines we met i mean i the team i think the team did work phenomenally i and you know uh, the strategies uh, for a digital first brand which normally takes about a year and a half to put into place we have managed to do all of that in the and in the coming future you'll see a lot of changes in the brand as well great great uh, anmol uh, over to you uh, how are you seeing uh, bacardi of course bacardi has been using mobile uh, you know as a medium for a long time uh, in their digital mix uh, post covid how do you see this significantly changing or you see that it remains the same or you want to use it in a different uh, strategy yeah uh, hi akshay so uh, at bacardi and because you know bacardi always keeps the consumer at the heart of whatever we do so with the changing consumer behavior we've always evolved our marketing strategies accordingly now let's look at from a consumer lens if we keep traditional media atl on one side and mobile marketing on the other with the penetration of mobiles with the penetration of internet across uh, markets in india even sub markets tier 2 markets the, the amount of time spent on the mobile is much more than the amount of time spent on television the second big thing is that television and radio etc they're all broadcasting mediums they're great traditional mediums and they're broadcasting in nature so anywhere where transactional information is concerned or you need to have an engagement with the brand the consumer seeks mobile platforms for that so bacardi has very effectively in the last few years done a lot of activities on ground which have a digital connect where you know the consumers are more active on digital for an experiential activity that they're going forward they're going with their friends to so that integration started happening much earlier hence during this time we again 
trended with how the consumer was behaving. So if the consumer is spending more time on mobile, we invest more in uh, content, where, which is again very targeted uh, uh, sort of content which is done by co-creators. So it's not brand first, it's content first. And now increasingly content to commerce, but some part as some part of the parts of the country now I also have e-commerce coming for uh, alcohol brands like us. The second important thing is, in times of pandemic, safety is utmost important. So in the times of safety, a consumer, they want to go out, but they want to engage with the brand, even the physical property, even the physical properties of the brand, very, very carefully. So this is where the second bit of mobile marketing, which is all your QR code scanning, etc., comes really handy. And this year, we have in Bacardi used that technology at the forefront of most of our activities in, uh, in our channels. That's great. Yes, uh, I've, I've seen a couple of your mobile marketing campaigns and uh, they're very engaging, like you say. Uh, and you rightly said that, you know, TV is more broadcasting and uh, of course, digital has been an engaging medium and it's a two way medium. Uh, but kind of uh, mobile makes it even more, uh, you know, right there and, and you know, at, at the user level. Um, uh, another, uh, uh, you know, I, I just want to follow up with this, uh, Anmol, uh, to you uh, with another question. Like sure. in the nine, last nine months, the way, you know, con content is consumed and promoted on mobile, uh, it has gone, you know, massive shifts. And is there a new playbook at work in this pandemic, uh, you know, as far as mobile marketing is concerned? What have you been, what have been that addictions for Bacardi, you know, being a liquor brand, being associated with lifestyle? Uh, you know, as a lifestyle company. Yeah. So you see, the, uh, actually, when we talk about the playbook, the playbook has <clears throat> effectively changed now, keeping the codes of pandemic for the consumer first. So there is, of course, whatever we do, even in mobile marketing, we've got safety, we've got convenience, we've got uh, availability, etc., which is which is handy. These are the three code words which I've been using for all my campaigns. In, for all the campaigns of Bacardi. So the playbook right now is more to do with how do you effectively target your consumer, keeping these three things in mind. So if it is about safety, if the consumer is purchasing your brand, there should be safety norms which is followed while creating engagement. So this is where the QR codes came into place. And uh, and it's very effective in terms of you know talking to your consumer and we want to take it forward in most of our campaigns. Then comes the convenience and the availability part which is also backend for the for brands like us to be available in neighborhood uh, uh, places where the consumer is available geo targeting the consumer relevant content to the consumer which is very personalized in today's time let's imagine a consumer who purchases our brands and this could be any target segment any uh, any brand that we are talking about and the code, the path to reach how the consumer is going to test you is to go to a 24-hour cycle of this consumer. And so, you know, where all is this consumer using the mobile and how effectively they want to use the mobile to interact with your brand? Are you available in a set of consideration? So even the content cannot be any any content. It has to be relevant content, very personalized messaging for the consumer. That is where the love story with the brand starts. Absolutely, yeah. You you absolutely right when you say that the messaging and what the content is, uh, you know, super critical. Uh, Prasanna, just uh, moving on to you. Uh, you know, in your view, as uh, you know, as marketing spends move from you know traditional and ATL to mobile marketing, you know, what do you think are a few of the trends and formats that will dominate? Right, like there is content, there is AR, uh, native, etc. What do you think? Uh, would be a dominating uh, format in uh, the times to come. Sure. Uh, hi, Akshay. Firstly, uh, I think uh, I've worked in a couple of uh, media agencies before, uh, you know, working in these platforms. Um, so, you know, at that time, digital used to be the last section that gets presented to the client. And within that, mobile used to be the absolute last, right? Like, the, you know, there have been times where I've been told saying, hey, uh, TV ka hua, digital and mobile will happen tomorrow. So you have to come back another day, but it's great to see all the panelists talking enthusiastically about how mobile is, you know, is an integral part of the media mix. And obviously it's equal to digital. So that's great to see. Uh, but, you know, specifically to how, uh, you know, Snapchat is looking at it is 
uh, you know, pandemic or even otherwise, uh, there were two trends that were emerging. Uh, you know, people with the time that they have uh, during this lockdown, people are sitting at home, they're able to wrap up work uh, most of the times and they have some free time in hand. So people either want to upskill themselves uh, or they want to use that time to watch content that entertains them. So we kind of uh, have some strategy for going for each of the two. Like, for example, um, in India, Snapchat has launched new original series uh, on in the Discover section. Discover section is where people you know, consume content on Snapchat. And that launched just in 2018. And in just a matter of two years, uh, we've, saw, we've, uh, we've uh, seen phenomenal growth. Uh, in fact, we saw close to 60% uh, growth on a quarterly basis um, you know, in the last quarter on the Discover section. And we are also investing in games for that matter. Uh, and because people are consuming content in the native language, we have introduced nine Indian language in which people can access Snapchat. Uh, and you know, as a result of all these efforts, our uh, daily active users grew over 150% uh, you know, in Q3 2020, and uh, and you know, if you go into our interface right now, we have close to 60 million users. They're all metro youth centric, uh, you know, and you know, co contrary to popular belief, uh, around only around 25 percent of the Snapchat users in India are below 18. Everybody else is above 18, so 75 percent above 18. So a lot of these trends are emerging, and we are, you know kind of uh, activating these and to the other section that we spoke about earlier uh, about upskilling people like children are, are, you know, I don't know if it's by force or by interest. A lot of people are being asked to upskill on their coding skills. Earlier, the peer pressure used to be it's not just any more Sharma Ji ka ladka. O over and over, it's like peer pressure against uh, uh, Mark Zuckerberg learned coding at five, five years yeah. of age. And, uh, and somebody else did at seven years of age. You also learn coding, so a lot of that upskilling thing is also happening. So we are uh, we are in that game as well in encouraging more and more college students to become um, augmented reality based lens creators. So we have our program going across different colleges in India, where we are certifying people in creating these uh, lenses, which again a lot of brands are using. But we're also getting democratizing augmented reality in a lot of people, you know, in a lot of uh, these colleges as well. In fact, the lens that's there in my background, Capital Social, is also something that was created as a result of this program where we are educating a lot of uh, people that wants to be upskilled in this area of augmented reality, which is uh, great for all of us. No, absolutely. Uh, like you rightly said, uh, people are upskilling and, uh, you know, things are, uh, you know, moving more towards uh, newer type of content, uh, like you mentioned for Snap. Uh, even, uh, you know, the, the phenomenon of OTTs have suddenly, you know, uh, exploded, right, post-COVID also. Uh, and who had thought that, you know, movies would start getting launched on a mobile screen? and big budget movies would uh, start getting launched there. And this is like a dramatic shift that we are seeing uh, and, uh, this year, of course. But uh, you never know. It will be a reality going forward also. Uh, and that's definitely one trend uh, where content coming in the small screen and long format content coming in, in the small screen uh, would also be there, of course, from the short content that al already exists. Uh, and of course, like you mentioned, uh, newer technologies, more you know, mobile technologies like AR, etc. Also, uh, for example, I think I was seeing somewhere that uh, you know trials are happening on mobile, right? So trial of a car, uh, and I think there are trial AR uh, through AR. You can uh, you know see a car itself. You can touch. You can touch it, but you can go inside it and actually see how it uh, you know is. Uh, and that that is actually uh, you know changing how we are uh, you know living in this society right now. Uh, that's great. Uh, also, um, uh, you know, just coming back to you, you know, Lotus Herbal is into skincare, hair care, you know, makeup, etc. And like you know, we mentioned, it is heavily offline into you know retail stores, uh, etc. My question to you is, hyper local has become an effective tactic for marketers how are you using mobile advertising you know for this purpose 
I think you're correct. Hyperlocal has uh, become uh, the way forward for marketers because there's a lot of respect for our internal culture, our culture, you know, which is very, very local. So uh, all especially related to beauty, the services, and also a lot of user generated content is being created uh, with Lotus Herbals and collaborations with the influencers at a very local level and also, you know, geotagging, geocompressing and like Anmol said, uh, geotargeting is something we are looking at and that's how we're working. Also, I would uh, like to tell that in post the pandemic, the borders between beauty and wellness have actually merged together. So the kind of content consumption currently, like you said, there's a new playbook uh, which we need to play with. Uh, people are focusing more towards holistic beauty holistic wellness so beauty brands are not beauty brands anymore there's a lot of extension to it so all our con content all our activations and all our you know I would say messaging has been around uh, a beauty that looks like me and of course wellness plays a very important part and I would also like to uh, tell that you know this year has been successful uh, for us because we've uh, latestly acquired uh, world's first organic ayurvedic wellness and beauty brand which is soul tree so like we said you know as a strategy we are moving forwards toward a content where beauty and wellness have merged with each other and also local and hyper local is of course a part of our strategy also just to uh, let you know a lot of live streams have happened uh, uh, and a lot of uh, you know uh, performance marketing videos which is user generator uh, generated is in local languages so we want to connect to our people from where they wherever they are beyond boundaries and we want to reach out to them so like i said hyper local is definitely the way forward for the brand right in fact uh, raji uh, for you also i think as bs group you know hyper local would be important i'm, I'm just presuming it would be because uh, you know uh, you are into uh, you know food and beverages taste etc you know changes uh, and of course uh, you know india is so diverse uh, messaging accordingly needs to change uh, you know consumption of the the products that uh, you have uh, you know would change so is hyper local an effective tactic for uh, you guys and how are you using that Interesting uh, to hear your thoughts. You are very right that uh, in today's context, hyperlocal is definitely very, very important. And when the digital and mobile, they are giving you that flexibility of uh, uh, targeting your consumer as per the location, as per the geo-targeting. So that's, this is definitely very re relevant. However, uh, we have seen that this is working a lot in case of retail brands. Uh, because that the consumer, when he's around their retail outlet, and when he get that time he's getting the message around the brand and with particularly with some offer the chances of his purchase intention his purchase action enhances manifold in fact uh, apart from that as i uh, said in the my beginning uh, uh, note also that uh, mobile and digital is giving a lot of flexibility if i want to focus a particular colony particular town particular uh, uh, consumer, I know that this uh, because in India, that even in Delhi, I will see that there's a lot of difference between uh, consumer at Chandni or maybe consumer at GK1 or GK2 and all that. Yeah. If I want to work with the Chandni consumer and may not uh, the GK1 consumer, so this is giving me a lot of flexibility on that. So earlier, like, like when we were doing the brand planning, we used to think, okay, we will do a uh, test marketing in a particular town. But now, when we do the planning, we don't think at town, we think at which particular area in their particular town. Because we have seen there is a lot of diversity in a particular town itself, in fact, particularly in metros, in fact. So we have been using all these te uh, uh, techniques a lot, in fact. In, for, as I said, that our consumer base of a particular brand we have found is much lower than the overall universe. The challenge without us is that how to profile my consumers and where do they uh, stay and what are their motivation and barriers? In all those things, this mobile is helping us a lot. In. Interesting. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, Anmol, I wanted to ask this question to you also that how, how is hyperlocal, uh, you know, does that benefit you in a particular way? I'm not too sure, you know, people think liquor is liquor, right? But I'm sure there are nuances to that also that it will be consumed in a particular way in Goa or vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, Chennai or maybe a different place uh, or that's a perception or you think that there is a need for hyper-local targeting, getting messaging 
to the right audience of a right demographic at the right place is very essential uh, for a brand like Bacardi. Yeah. So Akshay, you know how I view hyperlocaling is more like near me. What is what is it that is near me? So it has there is two ways how we can work and how we usually work. There are a lot of consumers who actually attend a lot of brand experiential platforms of ours, like Bacardi Weekend, uh, uh, Breezer Vivid Shuffle, and Bacardi Weekend of this year has gone digital. So on fifth of and sixth, it is all online. So. When we do that, a lot of geo-targeting happens to these consumers, reminding them of the famous brand uh, platform that they've been to, and they have a huge emotional connect with. The second way of the other channel to do it is we are quite partners, strong partners with our on-trade and off-trade channels, which means liquor stores and places where which are pubs and bars uh, who partner with Bacardi and have products and drinks available. Mm -hmm. Now imagine you're a consumer, and you're actually at a bus stand where everybody is going Hisar se Chandigarh, Hisar se Chandigarh. But somebody pops up and says, Hisar se Chandigarh, they chips free. You know, you suddenly say, yeah, this is good. Yeah, this is what I want. So this is when your near me marketing, uh, this hyper-local marketing of near me can be done by partnering with your respective uh, on-trade channels, which is your restaurant. So happy hours pop up. You know, Bacardi Weekender is happening at this outlet. Of course, during pandemic times, we are not concentrating as much as on uh, on trade and in the second channel, but we're definitely doing a lot with the consumer database we already have. Interesting. Interesting. And um, coming to uh, you, Prasanna, uh, you know, just wanted to ask, uh, how, how are you doing high local, uh, you know, getting used now? Okay. Uh, Hyperlocal actually, uh, you know, is an integral part of how one can advertise on Snap as well, because um, what we notice is, you know, I, I think as a company, uh, we've realized, you know, in, in the uh, long run that, you know, India is, is not just one country, right? It's like multiple countries put into one. So there are many such occasions and India is a very moment specific country, right? There would be different moments in different parts of India. Uh, so I would say, uh, for example, uh, certain festivals are celebrated, uh, you know, in certain states, uh, you know, and so on and so forth. So therefore, the communication needs to be different and it needs to be tailor made to those people. And because people are consuming content, you know, in these different languages and these different states, um, we normally encourage uh, brands to communicate in, in, a, in, in a manner that's more, um, you know, that's more applicable to that specific region. For example, a Durga Puja in West Bengal, um, or a Chhat Puja in Bihar and so on and so forth. So we have tasted success with a lot of campaigns. In fact, uh, uh, you know, some of the global brands that have tested success uh, with us by, um, you know, engaging with us. So in terms of making it, you know, hyper-local and specific to those audience in that specific region is super critical. And in fact, we collaborate with both the creative agencies and the client to be able to uh, tailor-make content, which is specific to those regions. So that's uh, how we tackle, um, you know, the kind of hyperlocal uh, possibilities that exist. So you did mention that uh, there are multiple languages available on Snap. Uh, there is content also available in multiple languages. Absolutely, content is also available in multiple languages. We have uh, in in the Discover section, and that's what has resulted in the significant increase in Discover section consumption uh, across different channels. We have some. Uh, really good curated content, um, you know, uh, you know, and everything is uh, almost, uh, you know, every content that goes on Snap that's uh, available for people to view is goes through a you know bit of screening. So therefore, we get to decide what you know gets prominence. So therefore, there is minimal hate. Like for example, uh, we got into trouble for a certain leader of who's not the leader anymore of a certain country uh, you know when they wanted to put out a lot of hate content and then we stood up against him them uh, so that you know uh, so that kind of uh, you know goes to show the kind of uh, content that comes onto uh, on the platform which is absolutely curated so it's a brand safe environment on snap as well over and above the fact that you have different languages in which people are consuming content in the discover section sure uh, we have about 10 minutes, so I just wanted to, you know, go through the panel and uh, ask one, uh, you know, final question. You know, as per, you know, the latest E4M marketing report, uh, you know, in the next three years, uh, mobile 
ad spends in India is going to expect to continue to grow, like a figure of about 45 percent, and reach about you know 80 to 20 thousand uh, crores. Uh, that is by 2020. What are the new emerging areas to watch out for in the mobile space in India that you think? Uh, which will define mobile marketing in 2021, right? Is it whether it is video, it is AR, you know, AI, super apps, we hear super apps being built out, uh, you know, by Tata's and Reliance, etc. Uh, what is the next big thing or the trend that we all should look out for in 21? Uh, if you had to sum it up, uh, you know, in a in few sentences, I'll I'll start with you, uh, uh, Doctor. Uh, if you can go ahead. Yes, like I said, uh, you know, um, for beauty, of course, it's a very different shift uh, towards a mobile first strategy. And like you said, uh, most of our ad spends and our advertising is now going to be adopting a mobile first strategy. So I think the biggest trend uh, upcoming uh, in the field of beauty would be. Am I audible? Yes. Yes. Yeah. You are. Yeah, yeah. So I, I was saying that, you know, the biggest trend upcoming in the field of beauty and beauty brands, of course, is, of course, AR, um, because that's the way forward. Uh, there's a lot of virtual application, virtual try-ons are the future. Also, there's a lot of, you know, omni-channel, uh, uh, you know, associations where the retail will be a virtual retail concept in future. So I'm adding to that. So there's a lot of omni-channel activations that can be, you know, um, accessed through mobiles. Also, another thing, I think social commerce and e-commerce is up on the rise. So that will be the future in the beauty industry as well. So this is my parting thoughts. I would say that. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Rajiv, you want to add something? Yeah, uh, I think two, three areas where I see a, a lot of potential. In FMCG, uh, e-commerce contributes hardly 3 or 3.5 percent in the overall sale. In the uh, COVID scenario, a lot many people, they have got into habit of purchasing online. That I think will continue after uh, post-COVID period also in fact. So that gives us a lot of uh, uh, opportunities. Because this uh, mobile, this is giving us the complete consumer journey. He can see my ad there only. He can click. He can uh, action. He can purchase. He can give his review also in fact. So this, I am quite excited that this will give uh, this will open a lot of opportunity. Number two, uh, AI is playing very very important role because in our brand, as I said, the biggest challenge is that overall universe is huge. That but the actual my target consumer is very limited. Uh, I have to target them based on their interest, their lifestyle, their behavior, psychographies and all. AI is playing very important role in giving me the exact focus targeting. Number three, I think voice will play a very important role in the coming years. Yes. Uh, uh, that the time in you can type 40 uh, words, you can say 150 words in the same time. In the consumers have limited time. They have so many uh, things to do on mobile and digital. I think voice will play a very, very important role. Uh, these are three areas where I see a lot of opportunities in the coming years. Sure, absolutely. You're right. Uh, you know, AI and voice, uh, uh, you know, we see that that is going to grow in uh, the next year with, you know, all these devices which are coming up, uh, like, you know, Alexa and Google. Um, you know, I think they are definitely something that will uh, define the future. Uh, and more, uh, your parting thoughts around these? So, pandemic has taught us everything, uh, taught us one thing that the technology barriers that existed with some group of people, you know, whether they were kids or they were senior citizens or they were people who were not very comfortable using mobile devices or internet, those barriers have come crashing down. So by force or by choice, everybody had to go online. So like how Rajiv said, it is here to stay. People will now continue using mobile technology, new technology, new platforms to interact with the world, to entertain themselves, to buy their products. And even if, uh, even if they have to give feedback, review, you know, talk to the brand, it'll be all on the mobile. So if we talk about alcohol specifically, I think augmented reality, artificial intelligence, voice technology, these are all new platforms. They are very interesting to see. But my interest would lie more in how do we apply this in an effective way that leads to doing what we do with the consumer, that is sell. 
that is where my interest would lie and i think it will come in time to come it will come you know these are brilliant technologies and we already we seeing integration of these technologies across so for for a brand like bacardi i think a combination of this would continue entertaining the consumer on the platforms that they do and who would not mind a bar uh, on the cloud <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. i think these uh, three technologies come together would be great so sure, absolutely i think it's more from uh, an experiential uh, you know for the customer right what you mentioned more from an experiential point of view that these technologies like you know uh, ar or voice etc you know makes a lot of difference and especially in a scenario where you know nobody can meet anybody or there is restrictions going on etc so have your you know avatars etc and do and probably for brands can do fun around those uh, i think but yes you rightly said how uh, a brand applies uh, these technologies would make a lot of difference uh, so sanal uh, in with you anything uh, you want to add on what are your thoughts around what will be the next few trends uh, in 2021 yeah yeah absolutely i think uh, one thing to watch out for is just because audience uh, users have a lot of time on hand uh, i think brand should learn to appreciate that time as well and not abuse it by showing long form creatives uh, you know to satisfy you know you know certain um, you know people internally you know because I, you know uh, i see in certain places certain basic um, best practices of mobile communication is being is not being followed like for example the brand needs to be up front and you know it needs to be short form because people do not have people have choices people do not have appointment viewing anymore even when they do they still have choices so a lot of those choices need to be respected uh, so i would i would say that should be because call out just because people have time doesn't mean you can run long format and you know and have the suspense big reveal that's not for mobile so one thing i think that definitely some people marketers should definitely watch out for uh, and just to take uh, something out of uh, what anmol said earlier about all these technologies like ai and ar are great but they need to deliver for us in terms of real business results uh, i just wanted to touch upon that um there was a study done you know as early as 2018 by mindshare which shows that when somebody is um using augmented reality they are 45% more likely to pay attention to the communication that's there in augmented reality so i have seen like i know uh, you know like if you touch touched upon um using tryons for example for you know makeup and stuff so that's one use case for augmented reality but uh, very recently we have used augmented reality to be able to communicate the kind of uh, uh, benefits that a brand can have using a gamified lens uh, in certain other cases using certain other lens technology where people are able to use augmented reality to be able to imbibe and understand that rtb that the brand wants to communicate so when you have augmented reality in the media mix along with hard working creatives which were you know like story ads or snap ads uh, a lot of those hard working creatives the combination gives great brand resonance and i can tell you from first hand knowledge uh, augmented reality actually works like a dream when it comes to brand resonance across the funnel be it top funnel mid funnel or even bottom funnel for that matter so i would strongly encourage people to use augmented reality to deliver brand results rather than using it as a new shiny toy uh, so definitely encourage brands to consider augmented reality to do the hard working tasks of building brand resonance great so uh, i what i take from it is online ecom mobile uh, commerce is going to be one uh, you know formidable trend uh, in 2021 given uh, the current scenario uh ai voice is uh, something that will develop and we see that uh, mm-hmm. ar would also be uh, you know one of the trends because of especially because of uh, having you know trials sure. at home uh, possible etc uh, and these are the three four trends that we see i think in the next year and you know time will tell how uh, you know these uh, pan out uh, thank you Absolutely all for your so. time
Uh, Mr. Mathur, just to cut in a short, uh, we, we still have a couple of questions coming in from the audience and we just have another four minutes uh, in hand uh, as per okay. the IST timing. So Mr. Mathur, I'll just quickly throw it to our esteemed panel. Uh, firstly, thank you so much for moderating it so wonderfully. Uh, uh, to all our esteemed panelists, I've just posted in the chat. The first question is, in mobile first strategy, are performance campaigns more in demand compared to branding campaigns? So could any of you just like to give in your uh, uh, perils of wisdom on the same? Uh -huh. Should I? Mr. Jai. Yes, please. Sir. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, when there is definitely there is a good opportunity of performance mark and campaigns on mobile. But I still feel that mobile gradually is becoming very important from branding perspective also. Because when the consumer spends more time on mobile and spends less time on the conventional media, so definitely the stickiness, the involvement, the engagement is more. Nowadays, what I'm noticing uh, that on the conventional media, even if you're watching something, well, be it TV or newspaper and all, our attention span is becoming less, in fact. When we see, uh, see some ad on TV, we, that time we start watching our Facebook, we start checking our Facebook Insta also and all that. Moreover, lately I've seen at least two campaigns, uh, popular campaigns, which I haven't, uh, which most of my colleagues, my people to whom I've interacted, they haven't seen anywhere on TV or newspaper anywhere. They have seen only on digital platform. One was from Cadbury, that hyperlocal campaign, one from Facebook. And many people, they remember the campaign only on mobile and digital. They are no way by any means the performance campaign, they are pure branding campaign. So I feel that sure. an increase in the time span and in the population of mobile and all, so this will not work only for performance, this will work a lot for branding also. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Mr. Jain. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, with two minutes in hand, I still have another audience question, which has just come in. It says that with, uh, with uh, digital growing dramatically, is there any one key learning which you would like to pass on to the new age marketers wanting, who are who are wanting to get into digital? So I think uh, what I'll do is for this, I'd just like a, 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 a note from every panelist, if you can just summarize it uh, with this one key learning. So first up, Ms. Gill, if you'd like to just give your one key learning on the same. Over to you. Yeah. So I think the key learning for me has always been think like the consumer. Don't think like the brand person. The moment you start thinking like a consumer, you will automatically know what are your drivers, what are your barriers, and how you would want to consume information from the brand. And automatically your campaigns will start resonating with consumer thoughts. So there is no rocket science to digital marketing. It's, it's relatively very, very easy. Sure. Thank you so much, Ms. Gill. Uh, Dr. Chatterjee, uh, uh, Chatterjee, if you could like to say your key learning for the same. I think one of my key learnings uh, and my key learnings, which I would like to pass on to the new age marketers and who are making the slow transition uh, from the field of a marketer to a digital first uh, strategy marketer. I would like to say that content is the king in digital. Uh, you should have thumb stopper content. So I call them thumb stoppers, not show stoppers. So thumb stopper. So, you know, the, the attention span is barely like I would say eight to 10 seconds maybe and of course prasanna would have a better idea of, um, the, in in terms of sure. so you know your content uh, if you're moving towards the digital you should think from a perspective of having a thumb stopper content otherwise uh, the entire digital campaign or the digital marketing strategy doesn't work out well so this is one of my key learnings so you have to create very good thumb stopper content absolutely thank you so much dr chatterjee uh, now i'd just like to go directly to mr raman for the final uh, key learning over to you yeah, I think my key learning for somebody that's starting out on digital is do not settle for metrics that meets your eye. You know, many times people make that mistake in digital saying just because there is a metric like CTR and, you know, swipe up rates. I mean, I mean, we all know like people have never swiped up or clicked on a TV ad and still brands were built. So, I mean, let's focus on metrics that really matter to you rather than focusing on metrics that meets the eye. Uh, I think you know, that's a longest topic, but in essence, I would say dig deep and find what metrics really matter and ensure that the translation from a, uh, from a, from a, um, from a campaign objective into specific uh, outcomes that you are picking up from the campaign or outputs, ensure that they talk to each other and don't just be, don't just settle for things that uh, meets the eye. Absolutely. So thank you so much, Mr. Raman, uh, Ms. Skill, uh, Dr. Chatterjee, Mr. Mathur, and Mr. Jain. Thank you for joining us and the India Brand Conclave. It was a great and a very engaging panel discussion. Once again, a big, big thank you.